Welcome to Q&A practice. Let's get started with a little two voice, get our fingers warmed up. Um, and we will start with the defense attorney. Ready? Prior to the accident, had you ever been under the treatment of a doctor other than for the average cold, flu, or such an illness as this? I don't remember. My mom might know. Let's focus on your years in high school. Do you recall any lengthy absence from school due to illness? Not a long time. No. How about during junior high? No. During grammar school? Tonsils. How would you describe your health today? Fairly good. I still have headaches sometimes. Do you believe that those headaches are related to the accident? I can't state it as a fact, but I didn't have them before as much. Everybody has headaches once in a while. When did you first start to have headaches? As soon as I can remember waking up after the accident. I mean real bad ones. Has anyone ever told you the cause of these headaches? They have told me it could have been from the accident. Who have those individuals been? Dr. Needham, how frequently do you have these headaches? Now, about a couple of times a week. What is their duration? Well, until I take something for it, take some aspirin or something. Are you presently under medication from a doctor for this condition? No, I just take an aspirin or something. As far as you are concerned then, the only health condition that you have today would be your headaches, is that correct? I believe so. My lungs are still a little bit, I don't know. I was told they were injured or damaged. Do they give you any pain? Some when I get very tired or exercise a lot. Now let's do some four voice practice with our transcript. Actually, just about done with this one. I just wanted to check, I believe that we are in the middle of Okay, it's the defense attorney's closing closing statement. Ready? Again, as I discussed in the argument a few minutes ago, trying to get the stipulation in, Revocation can be revocation stayed with downtime, or actually it can be stayed without downtime. It can be revocation stayed with downtime. It can be revocation stayed for permanent transfer to the person or persons acceptable to the department. It can be revocation stayed to permit double transfer. It doesn't have to be a full-on revocation. I think the court can look at Mr. Kang as and understand that you know he's older his health is failing he probably shouldn't be a licensee and the question is you know just how badly do we want to penalize him or hurt him in the context of these activities and particularly when it seems as though he has made an effort to try and avoid this type of incident and i would suggest that the court should consider a penalty far less punitive and less severe than a straight revocation, and I'm going to submit. Thank you, Mr. Crane. Anything else from the department before I close? You know, I would just refer to the court that the department is, that the recommendation is for straight revocation. I don't think that this case is really sufficiently mitigated to warrant much less, and you know, as the court knows, well, knows that you know licenses are privileges, and if you base your business on that license, that is a both a risk, a benefit. He's getting a, 
you get an asset or benefit, but it also comes with certain risks that if there's grounds for discipline, you may lose that license and whether or not that has whatever related economic problem that may cause, that's part of the deal. You get the privilege and if you lose it, anything else that happens that comes with the benefit also. I mean, he's been a licensee a long time, yet, you know, with six months worth of drug dealing going on, I cannot, I don't think it's the department's position that any lesser penalty is appropriate. All right, thank you, Mr. Van. May I, Your Honor, I'm sorry, may I just have three sentences? May I just, Mr. Van, yes, that's fine. I'm sorry, I realize it's out of order. I would just ask the court in reviewing this to consider 30 years of licensure by this gentleman. And yes, he had, I think it's four minor acts, not minor sales. It's four smaller type violations in that 30 years. He's basically run a good place for 30 years. And I think that warrants some consideration. I thank the court and Mr. Van. Thank you. The matter will then stand. Submitted. I'll issue my decision, which will be in writing. I'm going to close the record at this time. All right. That, that takes care of that transcript. this one and we will start with the plaintiff attorney ready is it fair to say that what mr. van is stating there is a comparison between writer Norse products and product objection to the extent it calls for speculation a product manufactured by Wilton repeat the question again I'm sorry is it fair to say that Mr. Van is making a comparison between a Ryder North product and a Wilton product in that email? Same objection. Doesn't seem to be a direct comparison. Looks like a general statement. Well, isn't Mr. Van stating that the Ryder North products have a higher wall height and higher center height than those Wilton products? Objection calls for speculation. I don't know. Okay, one of the recipients of the email was Mr. Ray. I also object to those questions, the last few questions, as being outside the topic. I'm not sure. Do you see Mr. Ray in the two line? Yes. Do you know who that is? I don't think so. Okay, I've just put before you Deposition Exhibit 19. It's an email dated May 9th, 2002 from somebody named Mike Barton. Okay, do you know who Mike Barton is? Yes, who is he? He's a sales rep. Is he employed by Ryder North US? No, is he an independent sales rep? Yes, and he sells Ryder North products, I take it, among other companies. Okay, so he does sell Ryder North products? Not anymore but he did at the time of this email, to the best of your knowledge, to the best of my knowledge. If you look at paragraph six, down towards the problem, down towards the bottom, I'm sorry, there's a reference to Wilton. Why don't you go ahead and read that paragraph and let me know when you're done. Okay, there's a reference in that paragraph and then also in the subject line of the email to OSH. Who or what is OSH? Orchard Supply Hardware. Did Ryder North sell to Orchard Supply Hardware? I personally don't know. Would you agree with me that paragraph 6 indicates that both Wilton and Ryder North were in competition with respect to selling to Orchard Supply Hardware? Objection to the extent it calls for speculation. I don't know. Who would know the answer to that question within Ryder North? Jake Small. Okay, Steve, I put before you deposition exhibit 20. It is two emails. The latest email is from Jake Small. 
to a group of people and it's dated June 27, 2002. Is that a fair statement? Yes. In the second paragraph of Mr. Small's email, in the second sentence, he says, quote, We are still having a patent issue on old frame system. End quote. Do you see that? Yes. Do you know what that's referring to? No, I do not. Is it referring to the 216 patent that's at issue in this case? I have no idea. Who would know within right or north? I have no idea. Okay, this is going back a ways. You were at the deposition of Mr. Small a couple weeks ago, were you not? Yes, I was. And is it fair to say that Mr. Small could not tell me what the patent issue was referenced in this email? I don't remember his deposition. Okay. I take it you didn't talk to Mr. Small in preparation for this deposition or anybody else listed on this email. Is that fair? That's fair. Also on Deposition Exhibit 20, in the, in the first paragraph of Mr. Small's email, there's a reference to a new frame system. Do you see that? Yes. Do you know what frame system that is? No, I do not. And I take it you didn't make any inquiries to anybody at Wright or North in preparation for this deposition to figure out what the new frame system is referenced in Deposition Exhibit 20? No. And that will conclude our Q&A practice.